I don't want to share someone else's thoughts. I want to create my own original thoughts. I want to create my own original solutions. I want to look at situations and come up with my own phrasing, my own words, and do it my way. This is the John Taffer Podcast. Shut it down. All right. It's John Taffer. Thank you for listening to the John Taffer Podcast. This is a pretty freaking exciting podcast. But before I get going, if you'd like to be on my podcast, please give us a call at 916-842-5180. You can give us a call anytime, 24-7, 916-842-5180. If you want to make any comments on today or any podcast, or if you're interested in being on the podcast as a guest, send me an email to podcast at johntaffer.com. That's podcast at johntaffer.com. Well, you know, I've been very concerned about my industry for these past uh, several months. I have dear friends who have lost their businesses, Corey. I mean, their life savings down the drain, buddy. I mean, it's been devastating. And you see what's going on here in our city in Las Vegas. Absolutely. Restaurants are going out of business like crazy. We're probably losing a few hundred a day across the country. I mean, some asterisk number like that. Uh, uh, When I look at a restaurant or a bar that's closed, it's not reopening. I don't see a restaurant or bar. I see an owner, I see a family, I see debt, I see a a dreams lost. I mean, I see complete destruction of family and dreams and everything that was so important. And I look back at the person and I envision when they opened it, how excited they were, Corey. You know, and they took pictures and they were starting their business and they put their life savings into it and it was getting to go and it was moving and it was making money finally after months and they're starting to dig out of their debt and then whammo, COVID. And I've watched this happen to thousands across the country, and you've all heard me talk about it since March with the predictions and the forecasts and guests. And, and, well, I've been so concerned with this election because I'm not quite sure I know the policies for my industry on both sides. I'm not sure I really understand the intentions of the Trump administration as it relates to the hospitality industry. And I certainly don't understand what the policies or intentions are from the Biden camp with regard to hospitality, and it frustrates the hell out of me. Think about this for a moment. The restaurant industry has over a million restaurants across the country. During the pandemic, the restaurant industry lost more employees than any other industry in America. Think about that. We used to employ about 15 and a half million employees, Corey. I'm guessing we're probably down to 3 million or something now. Devastating to our communities, devastating to family businesses. 70% of the independent restaurants that you see out there are single unit owned, meaning that owner owns one restaurant. It's the epitome wow. of a family business. That's, that's an incredible number. It is 70%, Corey. Yeah. It's the epitome of a small business. Well, my industry has been devastated. People are in debt. They can't pay their employees. They don't have money to buy food or beverages, Corey, to stock their refrigerators or their bars. And they're going down fast. And I don't hear the Biden camp saying much of anything. I don't hear the Trump camp saying much of anything. And I blame a lot of it on the national news. Because they're quick to talk about scandals and they're quick to talk about so many things. But the largest industry that's lost the most employees, that's not a topic worthy of the national news. So, you know, I said to myself, I want to find out these policies. I need to be an advocate for my industry. I'm on TV. I've got a freaking platform. I want to see if I can interview Joe Biden and President Trump. So I guess about a month ago, Corey, we sent out interview requests to the public relations departments of both the Trump campaign and the Biden campaign. We sent them out at almost the same day. I don't know which one went out first, one to their part or mm-hmm. something. Yep. And this was a bipartisan effort by me to find out where the hell these guys stand. Yeah. And, and, and as a hospitality guy, what do we have to look forward to after this election? Is there going to be a stimulus? What kind of stimulus is there going to be? If I'm going broke, should I hang in there? Is there something to wait for? Is there some type of solution to this problem? Well, I have not yet heard back from the Biden camp, but we did hear back. from from President Trump's campaign. And we heard from him, I guess, about uh, 10 days ago or so, Corey, a week ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they told us that they would like to do the interview. And it was originally set up as a Skype interview, which was supposed to happen yesterday. Yes. And uh, being it's the President of the United States and things can change, we didn't announce it because it could have been canceled at any time. And we weren't sure it was going to happen at all. 
Then we heard from the Trump team over the weekend, and they told us that the president was in fact coming to Las Vegas Tuesday night, and would I be willing, (laughs) willing to do a face-to-face interview with the president of the United States? And I could ask hospitality questions. I could ask him what programs. I could get him to commit to policies and programs. So for me, this is incredibly exciting. And I'm, I'm pleading with Joe Biden to give us the same opportunity so we can really present this in a bipartisan way. So I went to work. I reached out to the National Restaurant Association. I got questions from my friends there that are important to the industry. I called all my friends. I put together six or eight questions for the president. And this morning at Trump International in Las Vegas, I met with the president of the United States and I had him for about 15, 20 minutes and I could ask him questions, powerful questions about specific economic and tax programs that he would commit to to support the hospitality industry now, right after the election, and if he wins, in a second term. Now, for hospitality people, these commitments are critical. They're not in the national news. I have not heard any candidates make them at all. So my purpose in this interview was not to be supportive of the president. My purpose in this interview was not to be combative with the president. My purpose in this interview was to get the president to commit to certain key programs for my industry to give us a lifeline so we can dig out of this. Mr. President, thank you so much for spending some time with me today. Thank you very much, John. You know, over the years, sir, I've gotten to stay in some of your hotels. I've eaten in your restaurants. I've been in your casinos. I've always thought of you as a hospitality guy. Right. One of us, like I am. Well, it's uh, sort of natural for me, and it's natural for you, certainly. You've done great. Uh, And I've loved it. I love the business. I love business generally, but now I'm in a different kind of a business. I'm in a business of making America great again, and we're really doing it. We got hit with the plague from China. It was terrible, and they should have stopped it. They should have never let that happen. But uh, before that, and now after that, you see the kind of numbers we're doing. It's been amazing, actually. So post-COVID, sir, there are so many discussions on stimulus programs, and of course, uh, uh, none of it has happened quickly. I wanted to look forward, because COVID is winding down. Yes. And we need some stimulus to get our industry going. As you know, the restaurant industry has lost more jobs than any other industry. Right. And we're decimated by this. So sitting here in Nevada, one of the hubs of the hospitality industry, are you looking at another round of PPP? Yes. And, and uh, what type of provisions, what type of time period are you looking for in that? So we did two rounds plus, and they were very powerful, very strong. It worked out very good. But Nancy Pelosi is just tapping everyone along. She wants to bail out states that have been badly run, that have massive debt, that have a lot of problems, that are always run by Democrats in all cases. And she's not interested in helping the worker. We're going to have a very big stimulus package because I'm the one pushing it. I want the package bigger than hers. I'm a little different than a lot of other people, frankly, when I do that, but I understand what happened. It is not the worker's fault that that happened, that it came out of China. And Nancy Pelosi doesn't want to do it until after the election. I think they're going to lose the House, and I think we're going to win, and I have a feeling we're going to do fine in the Senate. Senate's not going to be easy, but I think we're going to do fine in the Senate. And we're going to do a very big package as soon as the election's over. I would rather do it now, but Nancy Pelosi does not want to do it. So I hope everybody remembers that. Last time, the PPP plan covered about eight weeks' worth of payroll. Yes, exactly. Would you like to see it longer this time? I could see it longer, or we'd just do an extension when the time comes. Mm -hmm. Either way would be okay with me, but we definitely want to do it. And we definitely will do it. And we want to get deductibility for the restaurants again. Do you remember you're an old-time restaurant, too? Do you remember the old days when you had deductibility? Of course. When they took that away, it actually really hurt the restaurant business. It actually became a smaller business. You know, people say, oh, this restaurant's successful. But it was never successful like it was before. So we're going to get deductibility back. For business meals? Yes. So when we look at a destination like Las Vegas or Miami and East Coast destinations, of course, you know, we're not going to come back until the planes are full again. And, And I've heard you mention just in passing that you've looked at some domestic travel incentives. Right. Is that something you're still committed to? So we're doing, we're doing a lot. We're working very hard with the airlines. I agree with you. You have to feel comfortable getting on a plane to make Nevada, really the whole state, whether it's Las Vegas or not, but Nevada really where it was seven months ago. You know, we had, we created something. It was the most successful economically that we've ever been. That includes this state, 
It includes Las Vegas itself, which I know very well. Here we are in a Trump building. So we are doing a lot of things having to do with tourism, and it's all coming to the vaccines are coming out very quickly. You know, we beat this with or without the vaccines, but the vaccines will make it go faster. Uh, therapeutically, it's incredible what's happened. I mean, I'm here. You right? feeling good? But really, I feel great. Uh, therapeutics are incredible what they can do. And when you look at mortality rates and everything, they're down to a level that nobody could ever believe. And that's all taken place over the last six months. So we have a lot of things going, but this is a business really you have to be able to get people into an airplane. We're also helping the airlines. We've helped them and we will continue. It's always been a tough business, a little bit like the restaurant business, always been a tough business to start off with, but we're helping the airlines. Are you concerned after COVID that, that the resistance to stimulus is gonna continue? No, I think once we get past the election, we're gonna get it. Uh, uh, it may be bipartisan, it may not have to be, depending if we win the House, it won't have to be. But uh, I think after, right after the election, we're going to get it one way or the other. It'll happen. You know, the employee retention tax credit has been very, very helpful for restaurants right. keeping employees right. going during right. this. Is that something that you'd consider expanding into more restaurant types? We're going to do that. We're going to do that for the worker and the employer. Uh, the tax credit is something that I want to do, I think, more than anybody else in Washington, frankly. Some people don't like it as much as I do. But after the election, we're going to get the tax credit uh, it will take place very soon, definitely before the end of the year. So when we look at a market like Las Vegas and Miami, because of what's going on in right. airlines, they become sort of drive-in markets right. now, right. rather than fly-in markets. A little bit. Do you see any incentive for hotels as a sector? So it depends. The thing with Las Vegas, you have so many rooms. I think you probably have more rooms than any place About in the world. About 150,000. And you can't just rely on, you know, re rely on drive-in. Plus, it's not going to pay the kind of money that people that fly over from various parts of the world that are loaded and they want to come over and they want to spend a lot of money. Great for jobs, great for your employees, everything else. So it's a temporary fix. That's all it is. It's a temporary fix. You have too many hotels. When you have the kind of rooms, numbers that you have, you got to have more than the drive-in. But the drive-in is a stopgap. It'll help. You're having a lot of people drive in. I noticed it. You have a lot of people drive in, but ultimately the airplanes is going to bring a lot more. Sir, as a hospitality guy, and I think of you as a hospitality guy, what would you say to the restaurant operators who are struggling now and, and we're counting on you yeah. to come through for yeah. us, and we do think of you as one of us. What would you say to us to have us hang in there and get past these next few months? I love that you said that they're counting on me because they can. I'm the one that got this whole thing started that kept them going in the first place. I'm the one that's fighting for deductibility, which will be such a big thing. That will be bigger. You'll make everything up very quickly because there was never a business. That was a great business when you had deductibility. Yeah. It was never the same after they ended that, probably close to 20 years ago. But I remember it well, and there was a reason for doing it. You know what the reason was? Everybody did so well. That's why they ended it. That's right. Somebody should have fought it. The restaurant should have fought it. But we're bringing that back. Uh, all I say to them is hang on, hang in, it's coming back, and it'll be better than before. Because if we can do a couple of the things like deductibility, you understand as a real restaurateur, you understand exactly what I mean. If we get deductibility and some other things back, the restaurant business will be better than it was before. And this is the time to get things. I mean, normally you could never even think about deductibility. But because of the fact that things aren't so good in that business, this is the time we can actually get it. get it done. If you would have told me two years ago, let's go for deductibility, they would have laughed at me. But now we can get, get it. it and if we get that, it'll be better than ever. That's exciting. Yeah, it's, to me, it's exciting. To me, ultimately, a little longer term, but ultimately, that's the most exciting thing for your business. Sir, so some restaurateurs, of course, and hoteliers are in debt four, five, six months yeah. because of, of revenue loss. Do you see any kind of debt relief program in the PPP or through yep. another vehicle? Well, we did a lot of it, and now what we're doing is replenishing, and we have a bill in that we want the Democrats to approve. It's all going to happen right after the election. You watch. Because no matter who you are, no matter how cold, how mean, how nasty, and you have some beauties in Washington, it makes sense. It wasn't the owner of a restaurant's fault, and it certainly wasn't the employees, the people that work in the restaurant. No matter who you are, it makes sense. And I've had very little 
problem getting people to like it. Right after the election, that'll all happen. Yeah, I believe that, too. I think it's important, yeah. actually. So we can look forward to another round of PPP? Yes, absolutely. And we can look forward quickly. to your commitment to, to business meal deductions? Yep. It's, we, we can it was actually forward. my idea. I'm the one that brought it up. I know. I heard they you said, say it. what does it mean? You, you heard it from me first, yeah. right? Yeah. They all said, what does it mean? I said, it was very easy to explain. But what it is is the best single thing. Best part of our conversation is talking about it. We're going to get it. It's going to mean a lot of money to us. And then you're going to look at some domestic travel incentives yes. as well. We're going to do that indeed. And that'll happen. And you're right about the automobile, the car. A lot of, a lot of business is coming in by car. But ultimately, the plane is very important. So, Mr. President, how are you feeling? I feel really good. I'm excited. I'm excited about the election coming up. Um, our voters go out on Tuesday. They don't even like voting on Monday. They don't even like the — they want to vote. And we're going to have a red wave. I think you understand this better than most. We're going to have a red wave the likes of which has never been seen, including four years ago. That was a tremendous red wave. But I think you have people out there's, I leave places. Last night, we were in Omaha, Michigan, Wisconsin. Tens of thousands of people at every place. So we give very short notice. And nobody's ever seen anything like it. John, I think we're going to have a tremendous election. I tell the people, wait till Tuesday if you want, or go and vote early. But they really like to wait. You'll explain that to me. But they really like to wait till Tuesday. They want to go out and vote on Tuesday. A lot of traditional people, but they feel safer. Yeah. They don't like ballots. They don't like sending them. They don't trust it. They want their vote to count. I think we're going to have a Tuesday, but you're going to have an early vote. But a Tuesday, the likes of which we've never seen before. Yeah. It's going to be an exciting day, sir. John, it's an honor to be with you. And keep up the good work. Thank you, Mr. President. It's, and someday it's... you'll run for office, I think, you know? I'm looking at it very I seriously. I have a feeling. I have a feeling. I've heard it. And uh, you would do very well. So, wow. Here I am sitting in my home studio. You and I, Corey, doing our podcast like we've done so many times before. But what a day. What a day, John. Yeah. <laughs> so it started for us at about 7 this morning. Uh, we went to a, a, a hotel in Las Vegas where we had to be tested. Uh, we had, of course, submit paperwork a couple of days ago for Secret Service clearance. We received our clearance. I'm very surprised they cleared you, Corey, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, honestly. <laughs> Uh, uh, we took our COVID tests. We had our results in a half hour, and then uh, we followed the motorcade, actually uh, a, sec a Secret Service vehicle, over to Trump International, uh, where we were uh, uh, met by an incredibly professional team. Don't you agree, Carl? Oh, yeah. They were yeah. unbelievable. Surprisingly, yeah. A and set us up in the meeting room, and uh, we waited and waited, and when the president entered, it was, it was of course, an exciting moment. And you know there are people who are going to politically say, yeah, Taffer, how could you do this? How could you do this? I have a responsibility to my industry to do this. I had a chance to talk to the President of the United States and get commitments of programs that will save some of my friends' asses in this business. And Corey, I would do that any freaking time. So I'm not suggesting you vote for either candidate today. That isn't my purpose. My purpose is to try to solve some problems for the industry that I love so much. And we did, Corey. So let's look back for a second. Let's see what the President committed to. One of the issues that was very important to the National Restaurant Association was that the president commit to broadening the employee retention tax credit program. That's a program that provides employers with tax credits for employees, so I can keep employees around, right, because I have incentives to do that. But it only applies to certain types of restaurants and food and beverage operations. So the president agreed to broaden that scope so it would include more restaurants in the employee retention tax credit. That's a big deal. The second big deal, the president committed to reinstituting the business meal tax deduction. Corey, when the tax deduction ended, I'm going to guess it was about 20 years ago or so, restaurant revenue suffered from it. Suddenly, you couldn't go out to lunch and write it off anymore. Oh, you didn't okay. go out to lunch as much. Right. I, so it became very, very different. And you had to be in a certain entertainment mode and with a client and, and, and deductions for business meals were much more difficult to do and in most cases gone. Well, if the president brings that back, that's a powerful, powerful revenue vehicle for the restaurant industry. He committed to that today. So that's two commitments, employee retention tax credit and a commitment to reinstitute the uh, uh, business meal deduction. The third thing that the president committed to today, which is also very powerful, is a domestic travel incentive. 
In essence, what that means is let's say you get a 30% tax incentive if you bought an airline ticket or something along those lines. I don't know the economics, but the fact is he committed to a program to incentivize domestic air travel. That means more business travel, Corey. That means more personal travel. That means you'll be incentivized to come to a Las Vegas. Not only can you fly on a business incentive, but your business meals can be deductible when you get here. Wow. So these are okay. big commitments. So to me, it was a very successful exercise. And I'm just thrilled that I had this opportunity. And I must say, the president was extremely gracious to me. He was extremely gracious to you, Corey, was he not? He was, he was. And I got a picture with him. Pretty you, excited about it. You did. <laughs> he, he called you a handsome guy, too. Uh, he did, he did. Yeah. <laughs> I think he was hitting on me a little bit. <laughs> and then he looked, he, he met my wife, Nicole, and he says to me, well... <laughs> You, you even mean more to me now than you did before. So Nicole brought me up a notch. You brought me up a notch. It was a great day. But you know what, folks? Professionalism is professionalism. Today I had a great professional experience uh, uh, with the White House Press Corps, Social uh, Secret Service, uh, uh, and the entire team, and it was pretty terrific. And I think we made some steps forward for the restaurant industry. So before you vote, think about these things. Think about what's best. Think about what's best for your industry, for your family. Let's not make this election just straight emotions or straight hate or straight love. Let's vote for what's smart for all of us. And I'll tell you this, a rising tide does lift all boats. And if we all vote for a good economy, you know, I think that starts to create a basis for more freedom, more self-respect, more respect for each other, and it puts us on a great course. So whatever you think your vote is going to do to get you there, you do it. But please vote, and I'll talk to you guys all next week. Do you want to see more of this podcast? Then hit subscribe right now. No excuses.